What's going on guys? So I decided since hey, I get outside a lot and I go after a lot of wild stuff, so I figured, you know, why not share with everyone everyone that I know? So welcome to Hartford Glen Park, which is just outside of Bel Air, Maryland. It's a really cool park. It's privately owned, close to the public on weekdays because it's owned by the Hartford C County Public Schools. But the reason why I love this park so much is one, I do my own personal research here on basking turtle beha behavior, but two, it's also that this park is so full and rich of wildlife and so much diversity, specifically turtles, which is my primary focus. So today, we're just going to go, you know, get a little bit of a survey of the park, get an idea of what lives here, what kind of place, animals call this place home. Now, they have everything from mud turtles to painted turtles to, like, even the invasive red-eared slider. But the thing that we're going to go looking for today is the king of them all. It is the top predator in this ecosystem, Salydra serpentina. We're going after the common snapping turtle today. So, with a bit of luck, we should find some. Let's go. One thing to note about the preferred habitat of the common snapping turtle is that they like mud. And because of their love of mud, they have properly been given the name of Mud Dragon. And as you can see, Yeah, getting to them is a bit of a challenge. What would be like a quick two minute walk becomes a 10 minute walk through thick mud. All right, I see one right now. It's a pretty decent sized adult. So hopefully the mud isn't too deep, but we're gonna try to get a lot closer. So stay tuned. As much as I wanna to get to them, I don't think it will be possible, not with the boots I'm wearing, which are only just up to my shins. He is in the middle of the river right now, and if I were to go, I would be up to my waist in mud. Note to self, bring waders. <laughs> but either way, we'll find one that we can catch. Found a decent trio of snapping turtles right here. I'm gonna see if I can get one. There we go. This is a very, very muddy common snapping turtle. It's a rather small one, not that big. Oh, oh boy. This is a little female. She's not too happy <laughs> that I got her out of the mud, but I'll put her down for a second and explain. So, common snapping turtles, like all reptiles, are technically speaking what people call cold-blooded. In reality, what they're called is ectotherms, meaning that they rely on, although they do produce some body heat, most of the heat that they rely to warm their bodies comes from the environment, not just from the sun, but also factors like the river that, or pond that they live in and the mud. So on a hot day like today, what they'll do is they'll just find a nice patch of mud, dig themselves in, and that keeps them cool during the summer heat. <laughs> and they certainly do love their mud. Now, they get a lot bigger than this. I'll pick her up again. Oh, <laughs> They do get a lot bigger than this. She's rather small in comparison to some of her <laughs> bigger relatives. But either way, this is a very powerful animal. This, if I'm not careful, this turtle can easily snap off one of my fingers with her jaw. So, there you have it, folks. First catch of the day, a nice little female. I think I'll let the other two leave be because, as you can probably tell, at least from the one right there, they're more or less all the same size as her. 
Hey, sweetheart. I know. I'll go ahead and put you back. I don't want to keep you from your spa day. Oh boy, if I can first get unstuck from the mud. All right, there you go, sweetheart. Whew, mud is crazy. Come on, there we go. All right, sweetheart. I know, I know, you want to get back. Oh my God. One of the great things about looking for snapping turtles is the sensation. I mean, you're literally looking for a prehistoric dragon, <laughs> for lack of better terms. Salydra serpentina, the common snapping turtle, is from the family Salydridae, which is an ancient breed of turtle. So these things literally look like they're from prehistoric times. They are just something to behold, so it's exhilarating when you go look for them. Here we go. When is a rock not a rock? Right. Now, let's take a seat talk you through it. She was basically, I heard a noise and I saw some ducks fly off so I figured it was another duck. But when I looked over the fence and through the lines I saw what, it looks like a rock and you can tell from the top of her shell. <laughs> if you couldn't tell, if, this was, if she was half buried in mud, for all you know she could be a rock. But I heard the movement in the grass when I got up closer, sure enough, it was a snapping turtle burying itself into the mud. So, oh, she put up quite a fight. She was already starting to dig into the mud. So I had to actually pull her out of the mud. She was in, already clawing herself in. And then obviously when she's trying to bite your hand off, <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks. And by all means, do not go out and decide to just handle a snapping turtle at random. It's a very dangerous thing that you can do. So I, please, kids don't do this at home. <laughs> Notice I'm never holding them by the tail. The reason why, although it looks nice and thick, like a handle, it's that they're obviously their tail is connected to their body. It's not a dead piece of shell. So their tail is fairly long for an adult turtle. And if people grab them by the tail, which they think may be a good handle, it actually has a very good chance of damaging the spine and possibly paralyzing the turtle. So that's why usually you'll see me when I grab them, I'm grabbing them from behind where the hind legs come out of the shell right there. It's just safe enough. I just say just because their necks can have a pretty decent reach. So she could probably even reach me back there, but it's the safest place to, for me to hold her. Isn't that right, sweetheart? She's not, she does not like me. Huh? Go ahead. <laughs> if that was my hand, forget about it. I'd be done. So, in Maryland, obviously the state reptile is the diamondback terrapin. And because it's obviously the state turtle, University of Maryland has decided to make it its state its school official school mascot. And one of their phrases is fear the turtle. Now, as much as I love the Diamondback Terrapin, and as much as I love my colleagues and friends at the University of Maryland, I want to call them out on their phrase because I think I just found something that may be a little more frightening than a Diamondback Terrapin. Because just as I was putting that female back, I found something really nice.
is a male they get bigger males definitely can get a lot bigger than this but either way he certainly uh gave me a good dose of mud didn't you big guy well not so much big guy he can still definitely grow snapping turtles have a lifespan of roughly 70 to 80 years so pretty much they live as long as humans do, so yeah, he's got plenty of growing. And unlike humans, snapping turtles will grow throughout their entire life, so males can get very, very bulky. Isn't that right, big guy? Come on, come on. Ugh. I know. Hi. Ooh. They've got really sharp claws. Trying not to get scratched by him. Isn't that right, big guy? I know, sorry. Whew. How are you doing? <laughs> now you can really see why they're called mud dragons. <laughs> All right, you want to go back, don't you? I know. All right, calm down. I'm going to put you back. I'm doing laundry tonight. Well... Although I did say that snapping turtles are the top predator in their environment, unfortunately, nothing's invincible in nature. And that applies to the snapping turtle also. Looks like this sub-adult didn't quite make it to adulthood. But fortunately, the only, one of the good things about a dead snapping turtle is that you can actually handle it fully and you can actually see everything about it without having, you know, anything bitten off. So, unfortunately, it's dead and obviously it's a sad loss, but at the same time, it is good for teaching purposes because you can actually be able to appreciate some of the features of the snapping turtle, like I said, without getting anything bitten off. So, one of the interesting things about the snapping turtle is that although yes it is a turtle it does as you can see have a shell this is just the top half called the carapace and it's very big and rugged but underneath is the interesting part it's plastron is actually really really small so you see it only really covers the center part the rest of it is exposed just the turtle is exposed to the wild now that doesn't really matter as this thing has an armored hide and it is full of muscle and you have to think twice before messing with a snapping turtle. But it does, doesn't, it does all have its same protection up top. Now, one of the things about snapping turtles, like I mentioned when I was getting that big male, they have these very sharp, huge claws. Now. Obviously, these claws are not meant for tearing flesh apart, no. Uh, that's their job of their jaw. These claws are designed to help dig them into the mud and anchor them in. That's why it's so, it was so hard for me to get those turtles out of the mud, because not only is the mud thick and sticky and these animals can get heavy, but these claws are just anchoring into the mud and holding them in, making it all the more heavy. And you can see how long his neck is stretched out to get an idea of how much they can reach to the sides of their shells and to the top. Now, unlike their cousin, the alligator snapping turtle down to the south, the common tap snapping turtle is not an ambush predator. No, these are active foragers. They will move through their environment looking for prey and they will eat anything that they can fit into their mouth. Anything from fish to birds, even vegetative matter, whatever they can eat, it's game. So, I think I'm gonna put this turtle right back where I found it and just let nature take its course. So I just wanted to share this all with you today. Just the fact that be mindful of the animals that are around you. Keep in mind that water systems are a very nutrient rich habitat that can support boundless amounts of wildlife. Anywhere from fish to invertebrates to different kinds of waterfowl and of course the beautiful and powerful snapping turtle. 
So I just wanted to give a little bit of a shout out to just these water ecosystems. These freshwater ecosystems are very special. And if we just keep in mind what we're doing to the environment, maybe we can have like these beautiful animals for a lot longer. <laughs> I mean, I certainly would appreciate it, but I'm pretty sure that the snapping turtles would really appreciate it. If that we just mind, kept in mind that what we're doing to the environment often has consequences. And we need to be mindful of what we're doing in order to keep places like this here and around the world safe and available for future generations to enjoy. So it's been fun talking to you all today and sharing you with what I love. KP out.